What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and thank you guys for tuning in. As always, before we get too deep into this episode, be sure to comment, be sure to like, and be sure to subscribe. We're on our way to 1.2k subscribers and I'm trying to get to 2k before the draft. We got a little under two months and I think that I can get there with the amount of content that I plan on pushing out in the next two months. But I need you guys to go ahead, the Bleeding BNG faithful. Do your job and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But not only that, go ahead and go ahead and flood them comments. I love interacting with you guys. You guys can tell that I try to get back to you guys with as many comments as possible. And once again, thank you guys for tuning into the channel. Because we have a right yet, we have yet another rather eventful, eventful day over there in Washington Commander Land. Um, and to give you a timestamp as I do for all of my episodes, today is Tuesday. Tuesday, March 5th, and it's about 8 p.m., and the festivities started with the eventful fireworks in Washington Commander's uh, land, uh, or essentially Washington Commander's social media, because, you know, everything revolves around social media nowadays, uh, especially um, with the Washington Commanders and Twitter. Uh, but the fireworks started on Washington Commander Twitter when about 4.06 p.m., Washington Commander, or current Washington Commander, I don't know how long, how much longer he's going to have this title. But current Washington Commander starting safety, Cam Curl, tweeted out a peace sign. He went up and chugged up the deuces like Chris Brown in 2010. Um, and that was at 4.06 p.m. And that was six minutes after, you know, the uh, franchise tag and the transition, uh, transition tag deadline for the NFL for players to be placed under those tags going into the 2024 season. And Cam Curl didn't receive either of those tags. And I'm not necessarily sure why Cam Curl might have been might have been surprised by this ordeal because Adam Peters told us just last week at the combine that the commanders didn't plan on using the um, franchise tag or Cam Curl. He said, yeah, we're going to keep in touch with these people. Um, you know, definitely we're going to have these negotiations between us and his agent and his team and things of that nature. But he said last week that we were not using a franchise tag on any player, let alone Cam Curl. So I'm not sure if Cam Curl was surprised. I'm not sure if the peace sign was letting you know that he was leaving. I'm not necessarily sure what the peace sign was for, um, but he did chug up the deuces. Um, and if Cam Curl was to be placed under that franchise tag, the franchise tag would have had him making around $17 million next year. Uh, and, ah, ah, you know you come to Bleeding BNG for the most raw, uncut, and unfiltered analysis. And we're about to go ahead and give it to you. Um, Cam Curl's a good player. He's a great tackler. He's one of the leaders on this defense. But when you're on the 32nd ranked defense, as I've told you guys time and time again, being the best player on the worst defense is like being the tallest dwarf. I'm trying my best not to say midget. Being, a, being one of the best players on the worst defense is like being the tallest diminutive person. It's like what accolades can you really acclaim from that? And like I said, Cam Curl is a good player. He's a great tackler, but he does not make enough impact plays. He does not make enough impact plays. In 60 games throughout Cam Curl's career, he has 328 tackles. He has one interception. He has two forced fumbles. And he has, he has no, excuse me, he has one forced fumble. And he has two fumble recoveries. So at this point, guys, 60 games into your career, going into your fifth year, you are what your track record says you are. If you guys have ever heard of the saying that you are what the back of the baseball card says you are, well, Cap Curl is what the back of the football card says he is to this point. And the back of the football card lets you know that he is not an impact player. He's not a guy that's going to create turnovers. And that's what you need on the back end in today's NFL. When you're giving up so much, when you're allowing so many points, um, you know, the, gone are the days of, you know, the sure tackles, the three and out defenses, the, 90, the 1985 Bears, the 2000 Ravens. You're not going to see those type of defenses anymore. No matter how good, how talented any modern day NFL is, any modern NFL defense is, you're not going to see those type of defenses no more because the rules don't allow those defenses to play to that nature. So what does that mean? That means that you're going to you're going to essentially and you're going to in essence give up more. Like that's hey, 
Roger Goodell told y'all, you know, we pay to see points and things of that nature. And the NFL has implemented rules so it's easier to score points. So the defenses, in essence, just give up more than they did in the early 2000s and the 80s and the 70s and things of that nature. So that means that when you have defenders on the ball, uh, the defenders on the field, it's more essential than ever, and it's more important than ever to have defenders that are create uh, that are um, capable of creating turnover worthy plays, impact plays. Tackle for losses if you're not going to have uh, you're not going to have interceptions. And Cam Curl did have a lot of tackle for losses for his safety, but you're on that back end. You gotta you gotta have more than one interception, one forced fumble, two fumble recoveries in sixty games. At that point, you are what the football card says you are. And I'm not sure why any of you guys are surprised by you know Cam Curl and the potential of him leaving because you know hey. Cam Curl's days may be numbered as a Washington commander. But if you guys have paid attention to Bleeding B&G, I told you guys last year, you know, Cam's father, shout out to Greg Curl because he's shown love to the page as well. Uh, but he told you last year, and I'm getting a sense that he's a bit of a troll and things of that nature, but he told you last year that they weren't going for anything less than 20. They weren't going for anything less than 20. And I pay attention to things like that. You know, we got that eagle out over here bleeding b and We pay attention to nothing, nothing gets past us. Nothing goes over our head and nothing gets past us. So I remember Greg Curl, Greg Curl making those tweets and tweeting in it, tweeting it a plethora of times to the point where I think he deleted them because I tried to search for him today and I didn't see where he necessarily um, had posted them. Uh, but he said last year they weren't getting 20. You know, they, they was floating. They was out of Washington. Now, I thought that was a little bit asinine because that would have made Cam Curl the highest paid safety in the NFL. While I do think that him playing under the franchise tag is asinine as well, making $17 million a year. When you hear the likes of, you know, Jesse Bates making $16 million a year, Mika Fitzpatrick making $18 million a year, and Derwin James making $19 million a year. I want you to lie to yourself. Go ahead if you want to and put those burgundy and gold tinted lenses on if you want to and tell me that Cam Curl is in the realm of those type of players that I that I just rattled off. Because he'll be making that type of money under the franchise tag. Just simply under the franchise tag one year. I need him to have Jesse Bates production who led the league in interceptions this past year. Mika Fitzpatrick's production who's a fucking dog who plays both the run and the pass at an elite level. I will give Cam Curl this. I told you guys, Cam Curl is a good player. He plays in the box. He plays the run at an elite level. And for somebody that's very light in the ass for the strong safety position, I, I marvel and I admire what Cam Curl does in the box. This is not an episode to bash Cam Curl by any means. But this is an episode to be a realist as a, ble as a burgundy and gold Washington Commander fan. That if you want the bag, you got to make these impact type plays. And those names, Jesse Bates, Minka Fitzpatrick, and Derwin James. One interception, two force, one force fumble, and two fumble recoveries look like a quarter of a season for them boys. So we can't be asking for that type of money. We can't be. And then I looked up his spot rack as soon as, you know, the tweets were mentioned and the, the firestorm started on Twitter. I looked up spot rack and I looked up Cab Curl's potential market value. And, you know, spot, spot rack is not the end all be all, but it is a great tool to help you analyze and use your other, you know, tools and resources to make your own judgment and things of that nature. But spot rack has Cab Curl's market value at around $14.4 million. Now, I'm not sure if that rolls with the uh, with the cap rising uh, $15 million um, over the last two weeks. I didn't check Cam Curl's market value prior to the cap rising. But if you would have asked me before the cap rising, I would have personally paid Cam Curl about $12 to $13 million per year. Now, who's, who's to know what Cam Curl is asking for? A lot of rumors are going around that he's asking for $15 million, and that will put him around his spot rack market value. But guys... If, the, if, the, if Adam Peters went along and Cam Curl, you know, we came to a compromise and they were willing to sign for my 12 to $13 million per year, that would have placed them amongst the likes of Kevin Byard and Quandre Diggs last year. That is not that is not bad company to be a part of. To, to, to That is not bad company to be a part of, excuse me. But are Cam Curl, is Cam Curl, like, 
Is he better than Kevin Byard? Maybe now. Kevin Byard was a little washed in 2023. But going into the 2023 season, would we have said that Cam Kerr was a better player than Kevin Byard and Quandre Diggs? If we were honestly looking at the NFL in, in a, at an NFL nationwide scope and not with our burgundy and gold tended lizards? Because that's around the money that he would be making if he signed the, the Jalen Morgan offer, the bleeding B&G offer of 12 to $13 million per year. He's a good player. I'm not over here trying to shortchange Cam Curl. But I'm not over here trying to pay him like he's prime Sean Taylor either. Some of the people I'm seeing throwing fits over a guy that has one interception in four years. I love Cam Curl. This isn't a Cam Curl bashing episode. But this is a bleeding B&G tells the truth episode. The last time Cam Curl caught an interception, the world was wearing masks. We had social distancing signs all over the place. That was the last time that Cam Curl caught an interception. And this is the guy that I'm supposed to be paying top three safety in the NFL money? I can't do that in good faith. I can't. And I know why Adam Peters can't do that in good faith as well. Everybody want to talk about trusting the process and trusting the new regime until it's a move that they don't like. I started the question of Cam Curl was coming back when we saw the rise of Carl Martin over the last couple of games last year. I started the question of Cam Curl was coming back when we drafted Quan Martin last year. After drafting Percy Butler, after Derek Forrest coming off of a career year. I said, God damn. Because you know, we always on top of it over here, bleeding BNG. I hate to to my own horn. No, I don't. But we're always on top of it. And Cam Curl is a great story. Homegrown talent. Seventh, seventh round draft pick. Played out his entire rookie year. Most seventh round draft picks are out the league by year five. Not looking for a double digit per year annual value contract. So I love Cam Curl. He's playing, he's living the American dream right now. But I won't be the foolish one to, to make him a top three safety in the NFL. And it looks like Adam Peters wouldn't either. It looks like Adam Peters won't be either. Either, excuse me. And I mean, the writing has essentially been on the wall if you look at things. Like I told you, Greg Curl is very active on social media. And if you guys can look, he was in his feelings about the commanders not sending Cam Curl a, a happy birthday. Now, that was a little foul because he still is on the roster, and I agree with him. But you would have thought the, the world ended the way that they were reacting about Cam Curl not getting a happy birthday. You would have thought, and that told me like, oh, they're looking for reasons to, you know, give them an excuse to leave at this point. On top of what Adam Peters said at the combine, on top of what they said last year about one in twenty million dollars, this is just a perfect stew for a departure from Cam Curl. This is all the ingredients to a perfect gumbo for the departure of Cam Curl. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the move. Let me know what you think the peace sign meant. Because ultimately, like I told you guys, I'm not sure why Cam Curl was surprised about not being franchise tag. But I do think that he might have been expecting an extension by the deadline, by the franchise tag deadline. A long-term extension by the franchise tag deadline. And he didn't get that. And me personally, I'm not reporting this. This is just my two cents. This is just my speculation. I think that the Washington Commanders and Adam Peters told Camp Curl, hey, go out. Check your market. See where the value is. And if it's where, you know, right around where we're looking at, hopefully you'll come back. But typically in those scenarios in the NFL and during the offseason, we rarely see that player ever have to come back, ever come back, ever tend to come back, excuse me. Because they tend to have too much pride to come back and they tend to go to a new team for around the same deal that they would have signed with their previous team. The one that drafted them, the one that developed them, the one that turned them into the player that is capable of negotiating these double digit per year annual uh, value contracts. So, I mean, like I said, it depends on how far they off in numbers. If Cam is wanting $16 million and Adam Peters is stuck at $13 million, that's a pretty significant gap that I don't think that they would be willing to compromise on. Uh, but 
if Cam is willing to compromise on around that bleeding BNG special contract deal at around 12 to 13 million. Maybe I might even be willing to give him that 14 and a half million that Spock Rack had uh, mentioned as his market value with the bump up in the cap. Uh, because guess what? We got money. I think we got the highest um, second cap space in the entire NFL. So we do have the money to give them. But that doesn't mean we just give out foolish contracts. That doesn't mean that we have Cam Curl out here making $18 million a year. And he's a shell of himself in the fifth year of that deal. We don't give him the, the Landon Collins deal. We don't do that. We don't do that. Shout out to Landon Collins though. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys willing to sign Cam Curl for all the monies, all the munions? Are you just giving him whatever he's asking for? Are you willing to sign him for the bleeding B&G deal? Or do you want Cam Curl off of this roster? Because like I've said, he was a good player on this roster. But, I mean, I wouldn't be latching my or, or holding on to anything, any asset of the 32nd rate defense. I wouldn't be lacking like that's precious gold or precious value by any means. Nobody on that 32nd ring defense. Monta, I mean, uh, Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne included. They're not untouchable by any means. And John Allen might potentially get traded this offseason. If, you, if you're listening around in the rumor mill, be on the lookout for that video as well. Um, but as I've said, man, I love Cam Curl. Uh, hard worker, grinder. Uh, one thing that I noticed about Cam Curl is that he was always grinding in the training camp and the off-season practices that I was going to. He was always flying to the ball. Um, and that always led me to believe that, you know, he's running to the ball. He's showing a lot of pursuit. So the turnovers are going to come. But we in year five, and we're still saying the turnovers are going to come. So at that point, you got a question. Are they really going to come? Uh, but hard worker. Like I said, seventh round draft pick, homegrown. But we gotta remember, this is not the regime that drafted. This is not the regime that drafted Cam Curl and developed them and turned them into this homegrown product. He is homegrown from the Washington Football Organization, though. He is homegrown from the Washington Football Organization. And matter of fact, I think we were Redskins when Cam Curl got drafted. So he's been through all three name changes because this team had more name changes than Diddy. Are we talking about? Are, are we allowed to talk about Diddy today? Nah, I'm going to just leave that one alone. Uh, but I love Cam Curl. Um, hard worker, grinder, but somebody that's always been um, limited athletic, athletically to me. Uh, I can harken back to like the first time that I ever was like, whoa, Cam Curl's not the guy that I thought he was, was the 2021 season against the Buffalo Bills where he had to play a lot of the deep post safety. Uh, when they were covering a lot. And don't and I'm mentioning this because it's the truth. They were covering a lot for what was the beginning remnants of Landon Collins' downfall. But Cam Curl played a lot of deep uh, the deep post safety that day a lot, uh, in a more quasi-free safety role. And the Buffalo Bills had more Hail Marys than Tupac in 94. And that's why I was like, ah, I don't know if Cam can do it. You know, Josh Allen was just throwing it over his head and he didn't have the speed or the acceleration to get there. And that might be, you know, was coming into play with a lot of these lack of turnovers and things of that nature as well. Um, you know, the the smarts in the box um, allow you to be a good box player. But the the limit athletically um, kind of impacts what you tend to do downfield. Um, so while I wouldn't give him top three safety in the NFL money, I might give him top 10, top 12, because he is that type of player. And he does have the production that warrants that. Um, and he can be a leader of your defense. Um, you know, everybody has said how smart and how he knows the playbook. You know, he was having a green dot when Jamin Davis was the only linebacker on the field in 2022. Um, so he has the capabilities of being a leader, but those capabilities don't get you $20 million a year. Um, so thank you for tuning into the channel. Once again, hit up that comment um, section. Let me know what you think about this whole Cam Curl situation. Let me know what you would do if you were the GM of the Washington Commanders. If you were Adam Adam Peters, let me know what you would do. Um, and thank you guys for tuning into the channel. Oh, as always, as always, if you haven't followed us on our social medias, our Instagram is at bleeding bng at b l e e d i n g b n g. Our Twitter handle, our X handle, I'm gonna call it by his biological father. Our Twitter handle is a tad bit different. That one's at bleeding b n g b l e e d i n. 
BNG. Go ahead and hit those subscribe buttons. Always, I mean, go ahead and hit those follow buttons. Um, as always, subscribe to us on YouTube. Flood that comment section. And if you haven't signed up to be a member of the Bleeding BNG Mafia, go ahead. Guys, like I told you, I got merch on deck that I'm just looking to give away. I got merchandise on deck that I'm just looking to give away. But you got to sign up to be a part of that membership is first. Um, I got chains that I'm looking to give away right there. Like, like, what we doing? Go ahead and hit that membership button so you can get some of this free merch as well. Thank you guys for tuning into the channel. And I'll check in on you guys later.